Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. He's done it all, and he's still doing it. Reporter for the New York Post, both before and after Murdoch. The Post's City Hall Bureau Chief. News Director at Channel 5. Press Secretary to Ed Koch. One of New York's premier political and communications consultants, a walking encyclopedia, and a master of getting things done. He's George Arts, president of George Arts Communication, and he's here to talk about New York City politics, past, present, and future. Welcome, George. It's Good a pleasure. To be here. Before we get to New York politics, let's start with New Jersey politics, and let's start with Chris Christie. Talk about your impressions of the mayor culpa and the, the situation. And no one goes two hours without thinking that he's in real trouble. Um, he's obviously in real trouble, you know, forget about the presidency, but he's in trouble in, in New Jersey. Who trusts him now? Uh, the last poll I read, 54% said that, that uh, they don't believe him. So you got to say more, it, this will grow as you get closer, as you get, you get closer to him in the number of aides that, that have a problem. Okay, examine it from a political communications perspective, that hour and 47 minute mea culpa. What, 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 what were the sort of the model good points and what were some of the pitfalls? I, I think he was okay in some of his answers. He went way too long. Mm -hmm. uh, he, and while he was smooth, didn't get in, it didn't go down the slippery slope, as they say. Mm -hmm. He had a real problem in in just going on and on with cameras rolling. You take your half hour and you get out of there. Yeah, and, then, and particularly he was really pretty strong in the beginning, and then he sort of wandered off, and then he got into the traffic study. So your first rule is say it and shut up and get off the podium. Make your points and leave. Okay, now, what would you suggest to him, and I don't want you to be giving free advice, going forward? I would say going forward, he better find out uh, the trail before investigators do, and exactly who was in charge and who told these people to shut down the lanes. And, you, I mean, you're, you're an historian. I mean, it, you, you just look at Watergate. You know, you start low and you keep moving up the chain until you're either at the door or you're in the door. Well, that's very true. And I expect that to go pretty high in the Port Authority. And I expect this to go high up in his administration. Uh, Ed Koch didn't operate like any other uh, elected official. But the minute something hit the papers that we didn't know about, or we had an inkling about. He would congregate all these people in one room, go around the room, and ask each one what they know about it. I'm sure he did too. Ah, but if he did, if he did do that, then he lied. That's correct. And S if he lied, he's in trouble. And if we look at all these soon to be indicted emails and text, you expect to find something like a smoking gun? They don't have one yet, but I would, but there, I have a feeling there's one out there. There's no way that this went on for four days without him knowing it. Well, four days, a couple of months. I mean, they, two guys resigned from the Port exactly. Authority and it doesn't ask any questions. I mean, is it believable at all that he never asked any questions? I think he asked questions of, of Wildstein and uh, Kellyanne and all those people. I don't believe that they lied to him. So in George Arts's opinion, he's cooked. I think he's got serious problems. Okay. Let's now move on to you in New York City. Okay. I, I listed your jobs. I mean, your resume is... I couldn't keep a job, yes. I, I know. I mean, you move from job to job to job. What was your favorite job? 
and mm -hmm. why? I love newspapers. I'd, I'd love to be on a newspaper uh, with deadlines and constantly getting your story in. The idea that you could find something out and it would be on the street in two hours. Uh, once when I was on the subway, someone was reading my story, it was on page three, and I thought to myself, God, I would do this job for nothing. All right. I didn't tell that to my boss. No, no, I understand that. And I'm, I'm of similar feeling with mine. You've often said, though, that the one job or the one uh, uh, activity that you really didn't like was TV. I didn't like TV because TV never let me drill down, never let me get to everything I wanted to. And the whole idea of leaving out names from the script and, and not trying to uh, confuse the viewer, uh, it, you know, it was not my thing. TV, now, TV news now, political news now versus then, better, worse, different, how? I think it's about the, the same. I, I just think that TV goes for the headlines. Right. And newspapers go for the headlines, but allows you to go down into the details in your story. Uh, and I think that's the, the real difference. It needs, I, I worked harder in, in uh, newspapers than I did in TV. Mm, okay. You wrote for 18 years, yes. but you don't write now. Why? I would like to write. I would like to write books, but I just don't have the time to do it. When right do now. you write the book? Because that's got to be, I, you know, that's got to be a bombshell and a, come on. You well, must have stories. I have a lot of stories. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the Koch people do. That I, I think that uh, John LeCicero is writing a book. Oh, is he? Yes. And it, Ooh. And, and so uh, we sit around, we tell stories, and it, you know, and it, it was a great administration, the Koch administration, uh, but there was a lot of humor involved. Oh, yeah, but you're, I mean, knowing many of the, the, the principles, it was. Okay, you've been called, quote, the man behind the curtain, sphinx-like, father confessor, and in many ways, you are an anomaly. There are a lot of headline-seeking bombasts out there as political consultants. You're different. What it, why are you sort of always on the side, never up front? It's me. It's you. It, it, it's my personality. Uh, I'm, I'm not a headline seeker. I don't like to be out front. And I would like to give people advice behind the scenes. Okay. What does the firm do, George Aust Communications? I mean, it's really sort of the nexus of politics, government, and media. And if you go to your website, you do PR, government relations, community relations, social media, website design, campaign ads, and you've got a client list, a recent client list that's, you know, come on, it's who's who. I, th I think the, we are insiders in politics. We help people navigate government. Uh, we help we help outreach with the city with the city administration and with uh, with the community, the community boards. Uh, we do uh, we we're sort of uh, guiding all the people to the right people, all the clients to the right people. That's what we do. Nice, nice. A process broker, if you will, more than a power broker. Yes, you know, I think that's true. We service our, our clients to know who the right people to go to for their uh, projects. Now, among your clients, it would seem to me that outside real estate folks would really need you because the game here is so bizarre that you need insiders. Is that accurate? Well, they'll probably need me more in the next administration because there'll be great restrictions on, uh, on, these, on the developers. 
Okay, let's. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna transition in that into a, in a moment, but talk about that specifically. What you're gonna that have to, change? I think you're gonna have to build more affordable housing if you if you're not building as of right, and and I think that is that the direction that the uh, the Blasio administration is going. And 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 how does that impact your real estate clients? I I think before they be, uh, they have a massive project. Uh, they're going to have to think about where they're going to build the affordable housing. And they need folks like you. Yes. Okay. Let's get to politics. Favorite race. You've covered how many hundreds of races? Probably. Favorite race. Hillary, 2000. Ooh, why? Uh, because we couldn't crack the soccer moms in the city. In the, in, outside the city, and uh, we went through all sorts of uh, uh, ways to uh, to do it, and then finally, uh, her opponent walks over to her on oh, TV, Rick Lazio, and and uh, and and says, "Sign this," and 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 uh, Harold Dickey's uh, called me and 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 said, uh, "I think we found a way to get these soccer moms." I mean, talking about political suicide in one act was Lazio's moving across that stage. But, but if you remember that, that uh, the host of the show wasn't much better. Right. Right. Go ahead. You know, um, you know I think that, he, that uh, he just uh, went on and, and hit her really hard. And, you know, and it was very difficult. Yeah, no, I, I, I remember. The least favorite race. Least favorite race. One you lost, one you won. It, 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 it's not always the ones you, you, you lose. It's probably judgeships. Oh, talk about why. I, I just, it, I rarely do judgeships, but judgeships are, uh, I just don't find them compelling. Uh, I find the issues you know, for the larger judgeships for surrogate, I I like those. But you know, for civil court or supreme court, it's, it's a snooze. It, right. Okay. Who did you work for this cycle? We worked for a lot. We worked for Joe Hines and Lost. Ooh. We worked for Mel Wymore, the first transgender candidate mm -hmm. in the city. She it, uh, she lost. We wor we worked for Scott Stringer. He won. Um, we worked for, gee, I can't even remember. Melinda Katz. Oh, Melinda Katz, she, she won. She won, and uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of right. your client list. Julie Menon. Uh, Julie Menon, she Okay. Why not, the, and why not the mayor's race? I mean, you... They were all friends. Ah. Because you worked for I de Blasio worked and the, uh, de Blasio public advocate four years race. ago. And... Uh, de, I worked for de Blasio. I had a it, I had a good relationship with uh, uh, Chris Quinn. Yeah, that's that would be tough then to do that. It, um, and Billy Thompson. I knew, you know, I knew Billy well. Um, I and uh, I had worked for John Liu. It, it, you know, they were all friends. So you couldn't do it. it. I couldn't emotionally do it. Now, do you do state stuff as well? Yes. Okay. Statewide state stuff or local state stuff? It, uh, statewide, sometimes uh, local stuff, too. Okay. Um, so you've covered mayors from who? Lindsay? I've covered mayors from Lindsay. I've known every mayor since Impelitary. You've known everyone, including, I guess it, it would be Wagner, Lindsay. Uh, Impelitary, Wagner. Okay. Lindsay. Who was the best? I know Ed Koch was the best, but go ahead. Why was Ed Koch the best? I think that Ed Koch was the best because he he really bled for the city, and every decision he made, he wanted it to be right, and he was on top of every major issue. I mean, he used to joke around that if a uh, sparrow. Uh, died of a heart attack somewhere in the city, it's his fault. But I think he believed it. Right, and I, I was the chief of staff for a city councilman when, exactly when Ed came in, and he would wand the city hall, you know, and, and just have impromptu press conference. It was a show every day. Well, the AP reporter, Joe Schoner, uh, a, 
a legend it, in, in City Hall, he used to tell me, used to beg me when I was press secretary, please, one press conference a day. We don't want any more. Please. I mean, I, I, he used to do five, six. He used to walk around and well, do... Well, the, the radiated press conference. The radio, the radio, the radio I mean, ra I guess the right. viewers don't understand. As you walk into City Hall, there, there are, are radiators. Two, two radiators. Right, and then everybody congregates right. there. Assessment of the immediately previous mayor, Bloomberg? I think that, I think that Mike was a very good mayor. He... Uh, was a person who helped stabilize the city after the bombastic, bombastic uh, Mr. Giuliani. I, I think that uh, he did well. He, he knew how to navigate uh, government, and, and history will look kindly upon him. But very, very unlike Koch, as you just described him, in terms of the engagement, and in a sense, he didn't care if the sparrows died. Well, I think that he had a limited view of, of the job. Koch, you know, really bled. I don't think he did. Uh, and if you remember the, the, what was said at the end, of his administration, that there was no compassion, that, that that was what the poll said, you know, pretty accurately reflects the administration and hurt, and hurt his reputation. Ever worked for a Republican? I did. How, how many? One. Who? John Faso running against someone called Alan Hevesy. Ooh, in the, what, the 2000... Controller race. Yeah, whatever, 2002 or 2006? Mm. Why, why John Faso? I knew John Faso. I liked him. He was an honest guy. Uh, it, he's a wonderful guy. Uh, and I felt that uh, Alan Hevesy, from the time that I was a reporter all the way through, always lied to me. And then he turned out to end up in I prison. Did, I did not, of course, know oh, that. Sure. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's go to the, the 2013 election. So, in another 10 years, you're looking back and writing your book, and you're writing about the 2013 election. What's the headline? What's the lead? I would, I would say uh, no one will, will know Quinn when I'm writing the book, uh, but, I, but I would say that the Blasio comes from behind. It, you know, Quinn collapses. Uh, Wiener mucks up the race. I don't think that Wiener was ever a serious candidate. That even if Wiener was in, I believe that he he would have lost. He would have hurt De Blasio badly. Yeah, I, I mean, clearly, it maybe moved Quinn into a runoff with Thompson. Really changed the dynamic of right. the race. Why De Blasio? I think that. The electorate knew less about him than the others. They they found that the others were uh, wanting in in qualifications and in their field for them. Uh, they felt that Quinn was too close to the mayor, mm -hmm. that was, and they wanted a change. You know, it, there was this dichotomy where sixty percent of the people felt that that uh, the, that Bloomberg had done a good job. Sixty percent. Also wanted a change. Change, I know that the you polls know, so, were a little. Bit so if odd. you read it wrong, right? You know, it you were you were going entirely the wrong way, uh, and and I think that he was just someone. Uh, Bloomberg was uh, just someone people couldn't figure out, uh, but it, but Quinn definitely did not have uh, uh, it. It did not have stamina to, to last a race. Okay. Why did the two cities work for de Blasio and, in a sense, not work for Freddie Ferrer either, what, uh, eight years earlier or certainly four years earlier? Well, it, it, it's always interesting to me because John Del Cicado, who did the commercials, the famous Dante commercial, um, was working for Freddie. Right. And, and so they had the two cities. And now the two cities are, are, are here again. Perhaps it wasn't time for that sort of 
it, it delicate uh, statement because it, it could be viewed as divisive. Right. Uh, but it's difficult for a Latino to come up with that or an African American. And now you have a white figure who, who, who said it with a biracial family. Um, and uh, it was easier for him to say it and, and more credible than for an African American or Latino. Also, it's the, it's the context. You have the Great Recession, you have Occupy Wall Street, so the times, well, they change. stop and frisk. And stop and frisk, another element of his equality agenda it's, or inequality it, agenda. It, it, uh, you know, people all knew uh, stop and frisk was out there, right at the top of people's minds, uh, made all the headlines, and stop and frisk, there was a, a real e inequality, and, and people thought about their children being stopped. And uh, it just didn't go over well. Were you surprised, as many people were, at the tone of the inauguration, sort of the first day of the administration? You've got a variety of people from Harry Belafonte to Reverend Lucas to Tish James. Did that surprise you in terms of a transition? I think it, it did. I think people have to learn that the campaign is over and as Mario Cuomo would, would say, you're now governing in prose rather than the poetry of the campaign. Um, and and uh, the, some of the comments were very harsh. And you have to understand that an inauguration is about renewal and about uh, a, a new birth of liberty and not about hitting the last guy. Okay, so in term, they had a flawed communication strategy, you might say? I would say so. Okay. Looking at the new lineup, you've got a left-leaning mayor, a left-leaning public advocate, a left-leaning council, and a left-leaning council speaker. What does that portend for the city? You mentioned earlier the changes probably in real estate development. What else? What else is out there? What else changes? I think there'll be more uh, social service uh, announcements and, and new programs. Uh, but I, I do think that, you know, we go through these cycles where you go from a, a very liberal administration to a centrist administration uh, to, well, in the case of Giuliani, a right-wing administration. Right. Okay. Okay. The speaker's race, did it really portend a power shift, a power shift away from the county leaders to the mayor and away from Queens to Brooklyn? I mean, do we, did we have this tectonic political shift out there that things are changing? Uh, things change for this, uh, this time. The county leaders will, will be back eventually. Um, and I think that uh, clearly, when uh, de Blasio called Frank Setio and asked who was the uh, Brooklyn County Democratic yes, leader, and asked him to come on come on board, they did not have a great political relationship in the past. Uh, Frank Setio uh, did not back uh, de Blasio in Brooklyn politics, and and also in the um, in the mayoralty and. And so it was very hard for Frank to turn down um, the mayor. And so they came on board. And, and well, I mean, it, it must have made him a deal that he couldn't refuse as well. I think this mayor is in for four years. Do you want to be out in the desert for four years? Right, right. Okay. Let's now turn state. De Blasio and Cuomo, I mean, classic mayor-governor conflict, uh, Lindsey Rockefeller, uh, Giuliani Pataki, uh, your mayor had probably the best relationship with the governor, uh, Koch and Kerry. Well, they served in the same unit in World War II. Oh, I didn't know that. And so they went out. In fact, Koch would never talk about it, and you, Kerry, did. And, but they did have an excellent relationship, yes. certainly during the fiscal crisis. Yes. I mean, they, they worked hand in glove. Well, the previous mayor, Beam, and Kerry did not get along because Beam didn't know what was going on, essentially. Right. Okay. And both of them came from the clubhouse in Brooklyn. Yeah, both of them did. Okay. 
do you, what do you see about this universal pre-K? I mean, there's two I, pieces of it, the actual universal pre-K and the tax to get it. I mean, do, do read some tea leaves for me. Well, I'm it's someone who envisions how he could get it. And, and uh, in an election year, it's very difficult for the state to approve a tax. Um, however, there are people working on it uh, for the mayor. Um, up, upstate, I just think it, it's very difficult this year. Does he get the pre-K but not the tax? I think they'll have to look at alternatives for funding. Okay. Macro question. We only have a uh, little less than two minutes. What's the biggest change you've seen in your long tenure in political campaigning? I think it was this election. So I, in my I, way. I, I think that this election was very left and it moved after after 20 years of Republican, but the but centrist, well, the centrist or right governments, uh, to uh, very left government. Well, what about the actual art and craft of campaigning? Were there any breakthroughs there as well? Big changes? Well, sure, it's social media. Um, when I was a reporter, we only had the newspapers. Right. It's a real dominant. You know, we didn't care much about the TV. Uh, you know, uh, I know Gabe will call in. Uh, but, right, uh, right. Uh, Gabe uh, Pressman, go ahead. But uh, it, but now you have people uh, tweeting and and uh, and social media, and everything's going out on uh, uh, on blogs, and you didn't have that before. And then in, in this campaign, I mean, just to, to bring it back to De Blasio, he didn't do any mailing, which would, which had been a, a staple. He just used social media. I was never big on mailing anyway, and I certainly hate robocalls. Oh. I I really think they're really disturbing. Okay, we'll end we'll we'll end there on a disturbing note. My special thanks to George Ock for being on the show and for his observations of New York's administrations and for his insight into the art and craft of New York City politics. George, thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email, whatever it is. Thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it, send it.